Hello and welcome to Fundamental Investing with the Aid of Computers, a tutorial series number five. So now that we've brought in the price to book ratio, uh, let's add another metric to screen with. So basically what I think we're, what we'll do is, is first we're going to go through, and we've already done that, so we've, we go through and find stocks only with a price to book ratio that's less than 0.7. Now, of those companies that we find, let's look for a price to earnings to growth um, for X amount of time. In this case, uh, Yahoo does five years, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and we're going to want a, ra a ratio that's less than one. Um, so the idea of a PEG ratio is that a perfect one represents a fair, quote unquote fair, uh, value in accordance to uh, price to earnings to growth. Okay, so not you wouldn't necessarily want a price to earnings number that's less than one always. Um, so uh, the purpose of adding growth into it is that it kind of adds in that growth factor, right? Like if we've got a company and we're expecting it to grow a bunch, of course our price to earnings. Uh, is going to be different than a company um, that we don't expect any growth from. For example, a lot of the companies that we're going to find right now in the S&P 500, the growth is going to be fairly minimal for a lot of these companies. Um, some of the companies will have a, a significant growth, but nothing compared to a company, say, that's just had an IPO or something like that, right? More closer to the uh, category of quote unquote startup, right? That's the company that's gonna have massive growth. So uh, with value investing, we're looking at the right now and we're looking for companies that are currently right now below what we would consider fair value. Um, so we're gonna be requiring the PEG to be less than one. Um, a good example of this or explanation of PE or someone to back up this idea of PE to growth equaling one is Peter Lynch in his One Up on Wall Street book. He basically was, you know, he's the one that said, you know, the P-E ratio of a company um, that's fairly priced is going to equal its growth rate. So if the P-E ratio, let's say the price to earnings, people are paying 10 times earnings um, and the growth rate is 10%, then now you have a fair priced company. But let's say um, the price to earnings ratio is 10, but growth is 20%, now we're cooking, right? We're talking with a 0.5 PEG ratio. So not only do we want less than one, but um, I kind of think that we should exclude any negative PEG ratio. So um, the way you get a negative PEG ratio is that you're going to have negative growth. So people are paying maybe 10 times earnings, but your growth is minus 5% or expected to be not minus 5%. Uh, let's say, so it's giving you a negative 2 PEG ratio. Also, your earnings could decline and give you a negative PEG. Uh, personally, I think that we should find something with positive PEG <laughs> um, as we are looking for a valued or a valuable company that's just undervalued. Like our goal is to look for an undervalued company, not look for a company that we think might turn it around, right? That's not what we're in, in the business of. We're looking for right now, what's the value of this company and is it undervalued? And so a company that maybe might turn it around, that's not good enough, right? That's not the kind of investing we're looking for. When it comes to value investing, we might consider that down the road with some of these other fundamental investing um, strategies. But since we're doing value investing right now, it's best that we just avoid a negative PEG ratio, in my opinion. You know, a case could be made that a negative PEG, you know, for example, um, something like a company recognizes that it's stretched too thin and kind of wants to bring it in a little bit, become more efficient. That's a possibility. Um, but yeah, for now, I think that we should just stick with an above, above zero. Um, and also just keep in mind that even if we do this, you know, we're nowhere close to getting, you know, every stock that it spits out as a good stock based on just these, these two factors, right? And then also at the end of the day, you're going to want to compare PEGs to companies in related sectors. Um, since growth in sectors can still vary greatly depending on what sector we're comparing maybe 
And as a value investor, you're going to want to find the best valued company in a sector that might, you know, pop if, if you're expecting such a thing. So, uh, now that I've yapped a bunch, let's talk about doing it. It's going to be pretty close to what we did with the uh, uh, price to book ratio. We're going to look, find it in that table, and we're going to add it to our little program at use our program to do a little bit of logic, and we'll, we'll get this done. So, the first thing we'll want to do is let's hop on over to Yahoo again. And here we have, uh, we're just looking at ACI Arch Coal. And the uh, PEG ratio here we see is negative 0.76. So we're not too interested in it, but all we're going to do right now is figure out how we could find it on all the stocks. So again, you're going to want to highlight what you're looking for. Um, view the source, find it. There it is. And so in our case, let's just, we want to use everything up to this point copy that and uh, we'll come back over to our script and then just keep in mind it's again it's a, a, a closing table data tag so I'm not going to view this again for the other side um, so we'll come back over to our scripts and um, and then again we're gonna we're gonna require that first off the price to book ratio has to be under 0.7 so then we're gonna can just go ahead and continue on but we're gonna say right now PEG 5 for uh, PEG of five years equals uh, source code dot split and again we're just going to kind of do the same thing we did before I'm going to paste in that stuff that we just found um, then we want the first element there the first element um, think of it as really the second element cause it's on the other side of what we just used to split and then we're going to split again by um, closing table data tags and in this case we want zero with element so that should print out our PEG ratio. Um, so let's try it real quick. And uh, so we should get it for Alcoa. Um, so we'll save that, run it. Let me drag this over here. So anything, so we got AA. So we want to get it for Alcoa. We got a, the price to book ratio for AA is 0.66. And oh, we didn't have it print out PEG. <laughs> and I was like, why isn't it spit? It should spit it like instantly. Uh, so then let's just let's print uh, PG5. So there we go, bring it over. Okay, so we got AA price to book ratio is 0.66. The PEG ratio sadly is point or 2.64. So we're not too interested in it. And then let's wait for the other one. Uh, ACI and we already know that it's negative uh, 0.76. So if we come over here, um, we already did kind of confirm it just then, but let's look at AA here. Uh, yeah, it was Alcoa. And um, PEG, sure enough, 2.64. So we did find uh, the correct number, but obviously neither of these companies passed um, the two requirements that, that we need. So, uh, bummer. Um, so now uh, the next thing that we want to do is uh, first of all let's see if we can find one in, in a short order I'll run this this program for a little bit and see if I see anything with a less than one I'll pause it while I run it <laughs> okay so I went through the entire list of the S&P 500 and the only stock that meets this requirement was Radio Shack with a price to book ratio of 0.69 and a PEG of 0.02 so uh, what I'll do is we'll just add RSH here, Radio Shack, comma, and then what we can do is, um, for example, do like if PEG5, um, and what we'll say is like great is greater than zero, yet uh, less than one, and again we need to convert this to a float, not the caps. Um, we'll just say, you know, print stock comma meets requirements, something like that. Um, and then we'll change this back to short. We won't print that yet. Print, and then down here we'll just print PBR, print PG5, and, um, oh, I put this in the wrong one. Uh, hold on, let's see. P 
PEG5, we'll remove this RSH because that was in the wrong one. And we'll add RSH there. Save that, run it. And eventually, I'll pause as it goes through, but it should, oh, here it is. So it says, you know, RSH meets the requirements. It first printed on our price to book ratio, then our PEG ratio. So that is adding another layer to our stock screener. Um, obviously, this added layer shows us how hard it would be to find a value investing stock in the S&P 500 uh, using these two metrics, uh, though the price to book ratio was an okay one. It was the addition of the PEG ratio that really killed us here. Um, so anyways, we'll continue on uh, with some more principles for um, value investing. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.